Now, while changing the battery on this optic is a little easier because of the side loading tray, a lot of folks are still concerned with battery life. This particular one has a battery saving feature where if you sit this down on your nightstand when you go to bed, after four minutes, it'll turn itself off. But what if you need it in the middle of the night? Well, let's talk about that. In real time, I'll show you that shake awake feature. As you can see there, the optic has a shake awake feature and turns itself on instantaneously as soon as you grab it. Hey there folks, how you doing today? Welcome back to the channel and please bear with any background racket that you might hear throughout this production. We are on location where life happens and there's stuff going on out there that can be heard in here. Also, it's a little bit chilly out here this morning. I'm getting over some sinus stuff, so you might be able to hear that in my voice a little bit. Let's not let it stand in the way of the fun that we have in store for you. Out here on the table in front of me is a fan favorite here on this channel. This is our Canic Mete MC9. We have featured it in a full length review and a couple other times here on this platform. I'll show you real quick. This is a clear, safe, and empty weapon. We don't have any ammunition for it out here in our workspace, and it will stay that way for this portion of the video. I know that one guy's already typing his complaint that I said that, but safety is one of those things that we should always take seriously. So why do we have the Canic back out here if we've already talked about it? Well, as much fun as we've had with it and as good of a pistol as it is, it's not what we're here to talk about today, rather just the platform, the vehicle, if you will, that we're going to use to demonstrate this new to the market GoWutar HHC 17G Green Dot Optic. If you have watched any of the videos on this channel in the past, you may have run across one of the previous GoWutar Optic reviews that we have done here. We have soaked them in water, we have bounced them off of trees, we have thrown them in the dirt, we have hosed them off. Sure. Little covers on it good before we do anything else with it to see how it does in the water. Let's say you dropped it right on the optic in the dirt. And for the sake of argument, we did it again. And again. And again. Powered optic is all dirty now from being dropped in the ground. I guess we should clean it up. They continue to work, they continue to impress. I have yet to get a hold of a bad one. That being said, of all the GoWutar optics that we have tested in the past, the A17 model, which was their previous iteration of an RMSC compact size pistol dot, is probably the one that I was least happy with. That particular one did work and it worked well. We featured it on the Kimber R7 Mako last year. You'll see here that while the accuracy with it was very good, there were a couple of little issues with it, one of which was it has a bottom mount battery, and because it had the bottom mount battery, you have to remove the optic from the pistol in order to change the battery when it goes dead. Now, that's not a deal breaker, but a lot of people, including myself, just really don't like having to take it all the way off and potentially changing the zero and everything else in order to change the battery. The other issue with that optic was it had a two minute of angle green dot that was just a little bit small. Wasn't bad, but it was just a little bit small. Well, the folks over at GoWutar listened to the reviews. They did their research and in their ever present attempts to make things better and improve their product line, they have developed this new HHC 17G, which not only features a slightly larger three MOA green dot, it also has a side access battery compartment, so you do not have to take the optic off to change the battery. In addition to the improved dot size and the improved battery changing maintenance mechanism, there are a couple of other nice features that I'm going to show you here. For one, on the back of the pistol, you'll see that they have a rear sight built into it in the event that you had to take the rear sight off of your pistol. Now, in the case of this Canic, we did not have to do that. And while theirs is ever so slightly higher than the one that came on the pistol, it's close enough that at social work distances, it's not going to make that much of a difference. 
the way I typically set up a dot is where I look through my front and rear sights, and then I have the green dot sit right on top of that front post like it's dotting an eye. I'll throw that up here so you can see what it looks like. Another nice change from the last optic they sent out is they sent a little better assortment of screws, and this time I didn't have to go elsewhere to find screws that would work for the application as I did with the Kimber. So once I had the optic mounted to the pistol, I zeroed it to what I thought looked pretty good over the iron sights, and I took it out to the range, and this is what I found. Now you'll notice there, those two little groups I shot were on little targets that are about that size, and we kept most of them right in the middle, so the accuracy was good. It wasn't quite as good as what you saw on the Kimber video with the A17 optic. Let me explain. I've got an issue going on right now, and it's a little bit difficult for me to hold those tight little groups that I'm usually able to. However, how does that affect a real-world performance? We, we actually took the pistol out to a reduced sized steel silhouette which is just behind the 25 yard line out at the range so maybe 30 yards away and this was the results of that Now, if for whatever reason you decide you want this optic, but you don't want to mount it on top of a pistol like this, it does come with a little pick rail adapter so that you can mount it on top of any 1913 rail. So the optic seems to be pretty good. And I know most of you at this point are trying to figure out, okay, Jay, what's it going to cost me? Well, if you go over to GoWutar's website, you'll see that it's $128.99. However, they have given me a code, which I'll put down in the pinned comment of this video, that you could, go, that you could use to save 30% and get the optic for about $90. This optic is brand new to the market. It is so new, in fact, that I didn't even have an Amazon link to the optic until this morning, and they're working on getting me a discount code for that one as well. I will put those down in the pinned comment for you. Let me know what you think about this. Have you heard of GoWutar optics before? Have you ever used one? Let me know down below. If you get a chance, go over and check out the videos that we've done on these in the past. You'll see that we've had a lot of fun with them. And we've been relatively pleased with what we've gotten out of them in the past. That's enough for now. Your time's valuable, and I'm not going to take up any more of it this morning. But as you watch this video, you're probably getting ready for your Thanksgiving meal. Find something to be thankful for, like we did with our relationship with the folks over at GoWutar. Until next time, take care and God bless.